Welcome to my series on practical transfusion medicine. I am Kathleen Wong and I am a hematopathologist at the University of Alberta Hospital in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. This is part one, blood typing, antibody screen, and cross match. By the end of this session, you'll be able to achieve the following objectives. Number one, name the five major blood groups based on the ABO and RHD system and describe how they're tested. Number two, understand the purpose of the antibody screen and the clinical implications of a positive screen. Number three, describe how the electronic and serological crossmatch works and when they should be used. And number four, describe the process necessary to issue blood products from the blood bank. So let's begin by looking at the ABO blood system and the rhesus D antigen. The ABO blood system and the rhesus D antigen define an individual's blood type or group. As you can see in this diagram, on the left side, group A individuals express A antigen on their red cell surfaces and have naturally occurring antibodies against the B antigen or anti-B in their plasma. Conversely, individuals who are group B express the B antigen on the red cell surface and have naturally occurring antibodies against the A antigen or anti-A in their plasma. On the far right, you can see that individuals who are group O have neither A nor B antigen on the red cell surfaces and so, they have naturally occurring anti-A and anti-B in their plasma. And finally, individuals who are group AB express A and B antigens on the red cell surfaces, and so by definition, in their plasma, they lack anti-A and anti-B. RHD individuals have D antigen on their red cells, while RH negative individuals lack the D antigen on their red cells. In the blood bank, ABO and RH blood typing testing comprises two steps. In forward grouping, patient red cells are tested against commercially available anti-A and anti-B to detect their surface antigen composition. In reverse grouping, patient plasma is tested against commercially available group A and group B red cells to detect its antibody composition. In other words, forward typing asks what antigen is on the red cell surface, while reverse typing asks what antibody is in the plasma. The forward and reverse typing tests are double checks for each other and the results should be concordant. The RHD status on red cells is determined by forward typing. Patient red cells are tested against reagent anti-D to determine whether there is D antigen on the red cell surface, making that individual RH positive, or if the D antigen is not present on the red cell surface, that individual is RH negative. It is important to realize that in addition to the D antigen, the rhesus blood system contains other antigens, and there are also other non-ABO blood systems, including Kel, Kid, Duffy, and the MNS system that have their own antigens too. Anyone can form an antibody against a foreign red cell antigen that is not on their own red cells, but one must be exposed to the foreign non-ABO red cell antigen through pregnancy or transfusion in order to form the allo antibody against it, unlike the naturally occurring antibodies directed against the A and B antigens in an individual's plasma. So how do we detect the presence of non-ABO red cell antibodies? We perform an antibody screen, as seen here, by incubating the patient's plasma against three different kinds of reagent red cells to see whether there is any red cell clumping in any of the reaction wells. This is an example of a negative antibody screen. In this case, Mr. Murray's plasma has been mixed and incubated with three kinds of reagent red cells, as noted in vials 1, 2, and 3. The column of zeros, seen here on the far right, means that there is no red cell clumping in any of the three reaction wells between Mr. Murray's plasma and the reagent red cells, meaning that Mr. Murray's plasma is negative for an unexpected non-ABO red cell antibody. The antigen composition on the reagent red cells is indicated by a plus or zero sign under the corresponding antigen name. For example, if you look at the reagent red cells in vial 1, they are positive for the big D big C, little e, and big K antigen, also known as Kel antigen, as illustrated. Why do we use three different kinds of reagent red cells in the antibody screen? To make sure all the important non-ABO red cell antigens are represented between the reagent red cells so that we can be confident that a negative antibody screen result does indeed mean the patient has no detectable non-ABO red cell antibodies present. For example, if we remove vial 1, 
from the screen test result here that we may miss picking up anti-Kel in Mr. Murray's plasma even if the screen is negative against reagents. Two and three red cells because these red cells actually do not express the Kel antigen. It is important to realize that this negative antibody screen does not mean Mr. Murray has never formed a non-ABO red cell antibody before, just that our current screen test is negative. As you can see, there were no clumping in any of the reaction wells, so the current antibody screen is negative and there is no evidence of any non-ABO red cell antibodies here. However, his immune system could have responded previously by making an antibody when it encountered a foreign red cell antigen. But once the offending antigen is removed, then his immune system stops producing the red cell aloe antibody. So the current antibody screen may be negative simply because active antibody production has ceased or the antibody level has dropped below that which is detectable by the screen. Therefore, as part of any type in screen tests, the technologist in the blood bank will also perform a history check on our blood bank information system to see whether the patient has ever formed an antibody previously that we need to be aware of currently in order to issue compatible red cells. The ABO and RH typing take the automated analyzer about 5 minutes to complete. The antibody screen takes about 30 minutes to complete. The type and screen are always performed together in the analyzer when there's a request for transfusion, so the total time needed to result the type and screen is 30 minutes. After the type and screen is complete and the technologist has performed a history check, then the last step to finish the product issue process in the blood bank is to perform a cross-match. For example, let's say two units of red cells are ordered for an O-positive patient. If the antibody screen is negative and the history check is uneventful, then to complete the cross-match, the technologist would go to the blood bank fridge and bring back two units of O-positive red cells. He or she would then scan their bar unit codes into the blood bank computer system. The computer system performs an electronic, also known as a computer-assisted cross-match, by comparing the unit information against the blood group antibody screen and history check results on the patient. The computer then indicates to the technologist that two units retrieved from the fridge are indeed compatible and responds by printing out individual product tags to be attached to the units. The technologist finishes the cross-match by manually attaching the correct tag to the correct unit and they are released from the blood bank to the patient's location. This electronic or computer-assisted cross-match is the final safety check in the blood bank that ensures the correct blood product of the ABORH group is issued and delegated to a specific patient before the units are released from inventory. So the electronic or computer-assisted cross-match is one kind of cross-match, but what if the antibody screen is positive and or the history check is positive? Then the technologist must perform a serological cross-match instead. Before we discuss the serological cross-match, we need to discuss the clinical implications of a positive antibody screen. In this antibody screen, it is positive, which means that the patient's plasma has at least one unexpected non-ABO red cell antibody. We can tell the antibody screen is positive because the patient's plasma is reacting with a 2 plus strength reaction against the reagent red cells in vial 2. So what does a positive antibody screen mean? This means we need to perform an additional antibody identification tests to specify the antibody type. Practically speaking, this additional workup, which may be very complicated and extensive in some cases, means there will be a time delay in issuing compatible red cells to the patient. So it is important to consider requesting uncross-matched red cells for a patient with a positive antibody screen if the clinical situation is critical or life-threatening. Back to our positive antibody screen example. In this example, after further antibody investigations, an anti-BAKE E was found in Mr. Murray's plasma. This means the technologist must retrieve red cell units that are not only ABO compatible, but they must also be big E antigen negative to complete the serological cross-match for Mr. Murray. The technologist must mix and incubate his plasma with a small sample of donor red cells from each red cell unit ordered. 
if there is no red cell clumping between his plasma and that particular unit, then that unit is serological crossmatch compatible for the patient. The computer verifies the results and prints out the tag for each compatible unit. The technologist then attaches the correct tag to the unit and the red cell units ordered are issued and released from the blood bank. What does a positive antibody screen mean for future red cell transfusions? It means that all red cell units that are to be transfused to this patient in the future must be antigen negative for the corresponding antibody in the patient's plasma. And it also means that all cross matches in the future must be serologically performed to ensure that the issued units are compatible with the patient's plasma. Therefore, the process and steps necessary to issue blood products are summarized below. We need to first perform the type and screen, and then to perform the electronic crossmatch or the serological crossmatch, depending on the current antibody screen results and the history check in the blood bank information system. And then finally, the product may be tagged and issued from inventory to the patient's dedicated location. Remember, the ABO and RH type takes about 5 minutes to complete, and the antibody screen takes about 30 minutes. So together, the type and screen would take about 30 minutes to result. This means that an electronic crossmatch would take at least 30 minutes to complete, while a serological crossmatch would often require longer, on average about 45 to 60 minutes. Keep in mind that if the antibody investigation is complex and antigen-negative, compatible red cell units are challenging to locate, then the process would take even longer, sometimes hours. Therefore, when red cells are released without finalizing the ABORH type, the antibody screen result, or the crossmatch, then the units are uncrossmatched. Therefore, group O red cells are released as uncrossmatched red cells when the patient's blood group is unknown or not yet determined. But once the typing is available after five minutes, emergency release of group specific uncrossmatched red cells may be released before the antibody screen and crossmatch are completed. This slide summarizes when a type in screen versus a crossmatch should be requested. As you can see on the left, a type in screen is sufficient when there is a low probability of transfusion during the patient's stay in the hospital or if a planned procedure has a less than 10% risk of transfusion. Examples of the latter would include appendectomy, hernia repair, and cholecystectomy. On the right, a crossmatch should be requested when the transfusion is planned or if the procedure has a greater than 10% risk of transfusion. Good examples of the latter would include elective hip replacements, coronary artery bypass graft surgeries, or solid organ transplants. For a crossmatch request, please provide information on the number of red cell units required and the time and location of the transfusion to your transfusion medicine service. In summary, the ABO and RH type determine an individual's blood group. The antibody screen detects non-ABO red cell antibodies formed by the immune system as a result of previous exposure to four red cell antigens. A positive antibody screen requires additional investigation and means a time delay in issuing crossmatch compatible blood. An electronic or serological crossmatch is performed after the type in screen in order to issue crossmatch compatible blood. Uncrossmatched red cells are issued in emergencies after considering the risk-to-benefit ratio specific to the patient's clinical context. And finally, proper patient identification and informed consent are essential in transfusion medicine and clinical practice. This concludes Practical Transfusion Medicine Part 1 on blood typing, antibody screen, and crossmatch. In Part 2, in a separate recording, we will go through blood product utilization and their clinical indications. Thank you very much for your attention.